it up. Hangout is live. Okay, perfect. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today on another episode of Asking the Groomer. Um, hold on. <laughs> it's not working. Today is um, October the 13th, 2016. And um, I've been getting a lot of questions about this. A lot of people asking, you know, when this is going to be, you know, when is in, when's the next show? Um, so every week, oh, no. perfect. So um, it's every week, Thursday um, at three o'clock Eastern time. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. And so, um, and because it's my, my daughters actually have piano practice between 3.30 and 4. So we're using this time as, um, you know, I take a day off on Thursday. Sometimes I groom dogs in the morning or afternoon, just depending. But um, we, I like to take, you know, at least one day during the week, do errands, you know, spend the day with the kids. Um, but anyways, that's why we're doing it on Thursdays. And I wanted to address a topic that is really, um, has been fascinating to me. Um, and it seems like a lot of people just uh, either are not aware of it, especially professional groomers, are just not aware of the technique or how to do it. Um, and they, I think, I think the problem is that we um, overcomplicate it in our minds. When it, hand stripping, the the technique is called hand stripping, and it's actually very simple. <coughs> um, hand stripping, and I'm just going to take this from the ISCC uh, workbook, the International Society of Canine Cosmetologists. There we go, right there. So, and this is from section five about hand stripping. It says the term hand stripping simply means removing canine hair without breaking or cutting or by, by grasping the hair by the tip um, in between the index finger and thumb and pulling it out of its follicle in the direction the coat would lie. Um, and I have, let me see here. I went to the library today um, earlier with my kids and let me see here. Um, I'm gonna go to Google, my Google Drive. And I took some pictures of, of books that um, one is called The Ultimate Grooming Guide, amazing book. Um, and another one was called Animal Behaviors um, that I just you know wanted to look into. But anyways, uh, Google Drive, here it is. So, um, Oh, wow, 14 viewers. Wow. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining. Um, and today, Rhoda, what I really wanted to focus on is hand stripping. Oh, my goodness. Why is this happening like this? <laughs> All right, I'm going to get to my Google Drive and then try to screen share. Last week, um, screen share really wasn't working uh, for some reason, but I'm pretty confident it will work today. So um, my plan for today is to go over hand stripping, show you some pictures of the books, because I actually wanted to sh show you the book itself, um, but my wife took off with <laughs> uh, she. You know, it was I left it in the car. I forgot to bring it out. So my computer may be lagging right now because it's uh, loading up the pictures. Okay. Uh, my drive folder name. Oh, oh. Man. okay, that's what happened. All right, sorry guys. Um, as you know, things don't really go as planned. Um, but here we go. How to hand strip? Perfect. Let me screen share this. Uh. Come on, baby. Why is it not working? There we go. No, that's not. Oh, man. What did I just do? Okay. Okay, share. Um, thank you guys so much for being patient with me, by the way. Okay, here it is. Perfect. So, how to hand strip. Um, and I'm going to show a little picture of this, by the way. Um, and, oh, no, no. Uh, where is it? There we go. That's the one I'm going to share. How to hand strip. So uh, lift a small section at a time. Um, be sure to take a few hairs at a time because when you pull 
uh, too many hairs at once, it actually makes the skin turn red, like uh, little red bumps. And here, here's the thing, even if you're careful and you don't pull a lot at one time, you're pulling just a little bit, you're still going to get like those red bumps. Um, and that's just kind of part of it. But don't be alarmed. After the bath, it calms down and the skin turns back to a normal color, which is why I prefer, um, and a lot of show groomers actually prefer to do hand stripping before the bath. Um, so let me stop sharing that. I hope, hope that worked. <laughs> I hope everybody saw that. Um, but here's another one that I wanted to share. Um, where is it? Okay, for a puppy. So this is one where people are asking, like, how, how soon should I start stripping? Um, according to this book, and this book was called The Ultimate Grooming Guide. And uh, I actually have a <laughs> text from the library because the call number at this library here is 636.7, and the author's name is G E E S O N, Jason. So, Ultimate Dog Grooming Book. Um, but this one says when the coat begins to frizz at about 12 weeks of age, the puppy can, gently, can be gently stripped to get uh, used to the procedure. And you see how she's pinching it? She, so she, you're pinching just that fuzzy, they call it a halo, but it's like this frizz, this dull, brittle hair. And you're pinching those uh, lightly, gently, and just pulling it out a um, little bit at a time. Here is another one that, another page, I think it was page 205 in that book. And I really, I don't know if I'm like, um, you know, going to run into like trouble with copyright issues or something. But, it, you know, I, I mentioned the book, I mentioned the author. <laughs> Anyways. Um, look, step one, you see how all that fuzzy, dull, brittle coat, that wiry, brittle coat is there, right? That fuzziness. And um, number two, she's grabbing it with her index finger and her thumb. And by, when you do that, it kind of does, you know, wear on your fingers a lot. My fingers are kind of calloused as well. Um, but that's why the stripping knives, we use the stripping knives not to cut or, or break the hairs, but we're using it in the, in the place of our, you know, index finger so we can kind of get a better grip and save our fingers um, from working too hard. Um, and see, look at all that coat of number three, all that dead hair just dropping. Um, and around the face, all that wiry stuff around the nose and the muzzle, the, you know, the eyes, the legs, you know, number five, number six, look at that. That dog looks nice now. You can see the muscular shape. You can see that new fresh coat underneath. Um, and I actually saw prairie dogs doing this. Um, I mentioned this in one of my blogs I wrote. Um, <clears throat> when, you know, in the, the Phoenix Zoo in Arizona, so they have a really nice um, prairie dog uh, exhibit where you walk out this uh, uh, kind of a building that has other exhibits, but you walk out and here there's uh, prairie dogs right there. Um, and I saw this one just laying, kind of just enjoying the sun, just basking in it. And the other prairie dog going through like eating corn on the cob, you know, boo, 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 you know, eating, kind of chewing really fast all the way down the coat. And they were doing, they were, you know, that other prairie dog was actually, um, you know, hand stripping <laughs> for the other one. Um, and I'm just gonna look for, let's see here. Okay, so this was another another picture out of that, uh, another page out of that book. Um, and the thing is, um, I, I was actually, I looked at another book for Border Collies. It was saying the same thing about hand stripping and, and brushing out the dead coat. Um, and, and there's another book that I saw for pugs. I read that. Um, well, not read the whole thing, but skimmed through it and read the grooming area. I mean, almost every book that I read at the library, getting the dip out. So starting with the head, um, stripped all that, you know. So anyways, and so that's how you groom a schnauzer. And the schnauzer actually looks um, like a schnauzer, but it's not done with clippers or scissors. It's done by hand literally by pulling out. Um, let me see if there's any comments here. Uh, Steel Texas gal. Hey, Steel Texas gal. What's up? Hey, Jan. Ha tried hand stripping on my schnauzer. Good. Very good. He acted like a, oh, uh, maybe you're pulling too much at a time. Just kind of gently, maybe even try to pull one hair at a time. You know, let just, let, you know, um, when you kind of fluff the hair up, you'll kind of see some of the hair is like kind of, it won't lay down nice. It's frizzy. Um, just kind of pull those gently. A little bit at a time and massage while you're doing it. Pull, massage. 
and make it a really nice experience for them. And most of them just melt in my hand. Um, but you know, you're right. Some of them are like ah at first, but then once they feel how good it feels all, when all that hair that's causing their skin to feel tight, that's making them feel uncomfortable. Once that's out and they feel nice and wow, their skin feels smooth, and you're massaging them with it. Usually, um, usually they'll they'll give in. Um, Giselle Lynn, hi Giselle Lynn. Uh, Lorraine V, hello June, hello Lorraine V. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, let's see here. Hey Jin, love watching your videos. They're very helpful. Thank you so much. You know, because above all things, I really want um, the, my videos to be helpful because obviously um, <laughs> nothing, nothing else is that great about my videos. So at least the information, I want it to be helpful. Um, but I'm starting to add grooming services to my dog walking and boarding company. I look forward to learning more. Oh, wow. That's Christina. No, it's Chris. Yeah, Christina with a Y, Christina Lee. That's awesome. So you're already doing a dog grooming, I mean, your dog walking service, and you do bo dog boarding. Grooming just makes sense, right? So after you walk your, the, the client's dog, you could even like do a 30 minute uh, brushing session, which is going to be do so much for them than a bat bathing session. Um, actually, some border collies, I, you know, the border collie book that I read today at the library, Christina, it was saying that um, most border collie owners didn't, never bathe their dogs the ones that show their, their border collies because they're constantly pulling out that dead hair and the fresh new hair coming in will keep them nice and clean. So yeah, I mean, you can do like a, like a 15 minute brush out service maybe, and then charge a little more for like a 30 minute brush out service. But you know, that'd be, that'd be pretty cool. Um, Julie Skelding message retracted. Ooh, Julie Skelding. <laughs> Um, I don't know why your message would be retracted. Hopefully that wasn't, ha you know, automatic on, you know, the YouTube ad. Uh, DEW, how soon should I start stripping? Oh, <laughs> oh man. And you guys, uh, I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm an incredible stripper. <laughs> oh, man. I pulled that code out like nobody's business. Oh, man. That was pretty funny, D. Um, DEW, that was a really good one. Lori S., does a Havanese need this to be done? Okay. Um, oh, and how about for B-words? So Srinivas Stri, Andra followed up that question, how, how about for B-words? And B-words are kind of Yorkie mix, you know, but it's still nice. It's like a tricolored Yorkie, but smaller. They're so, they're so beautiful. Um, but for Havanese, Lori S. is asking, does a Havanese need this done? All dogs can benefit from the, having this done. It doesn't matter if it's a Havanese, a pug, a border collie, you know, literally, I wish I had that book with me because they have all these different breeds, even sporting breeds, Cocker Spaniels. You know, it really, the hair, rather than being clipped off, all that hair on the on the top and the back, rather, you know, is short. But rather than being clipped down and shaved short, it really, the longer hair should be pulled out. And the shorter hairs underneath have all this brilliance, this color and this luster, you know, because it has oils and it's sealed and it has color to it. It's bright. Um, and that's actually the natural way to groom dogs. Um, grooming, you know, we've come we've come a long way since you know, like this 19th century or something. So, you know, there's a oh, there's a book here that I really like called Poodle Grooming and Poodle Clipping and Grooming, and this is by um, Shirley Calstro, Calstro, Calston. Anyways, Shirley Calston, but. <laughs> um, they show pictures of like ancient, um, like in the Greek times, you know, like when they were shaving uh, poodles and clipping them and everything. And this is just something I, I thought was pretty cool. Um, it says, poodle-like dogs with large lion manes and closely trimmed hindquarters appear on ancient Greek and Roman coins. And in the time of Emperor Augustus, around 30 AD, they were carved on monuments and tombs resembling in a pr primitive way their modern day counterparts. I mean, so even in the time of Augustus, 30 AD, they were trimming poodles. And, uh, and one thing that I thought was pretty cool, 19th century grooming tip. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it says 19th century grooming tip. Okay, so grooming tip from the 19th century. Um, you guys are in for a treat. I don't know if you need, uh, were prepared, for a grooming tip all the way back from the 19th century, but I got a treat for you. <laughs> um, okay, so this is a 
is, is from, it's called In the House Dogs and Sporting Dogs. This was back in 1861. Um, John Myrick writes mm -hmm. that a dog who is well brushed regularly seldom requires washing and is never infested with vermin because they're being brushed often. If the dog is to be washed, he said, let it be done with yolks of eggs and not with soap, which irritates the skin, inflames the eyes, and by temporarily depriving the skin of its natural oily secretion, makes the dog extremely liable to become chilled afterwards. Mmm, just like beavers would freeze to death if they didn't have oil all over their coats, which is why beavers spend hours grooming themselves. But dogs, the same thing. They need to be brushed every day um, or on a regular basis, at least, you know, thoroughly on a regular basis and not wash so much because of soap. Anyways, this is 19th century stuff. <laughs> um, the washing with the yolks of eggs may be managed as follows. Let the dog stand in an empty tub. Rub the yolks of two, four or more eggs by degrees into his coat. By degrees meaning, you know, in the angles. The, the way the coat should lay, adding a little lukewarm water at a time until the dog is covered with a thick lather. When it is well rubbed in over the whole coat, pour clean warm water over the dog until the egg is entirely washed out. Um, and it goes on, but isn't that amazing? Even in the 19th century, um, these people that were like poodle enthusiasts, you know, these people that really knew about the breed knew not to use soap or, you know, dry out the coat, you know, because those oils and natural secretion um, you know, the oily skin, it, it, when we deprive the coat of that, the dogs get chilled, you know, and they're also, they're wide open to bacterial infestation. So, I mean, this is just amazing stuff that, I, I mean, I love learning more about grooming only because every day I'm learning more like, wow, you know, there's a natural way, there's a process to this, you know, we can't just throw a dog in the tub. That's just not, you know, it's not the way nature intended. And it's also not, what's best for the dog's skin. Um, but anyways, great questions. Uh, <clears throat> beavers, same thing for beavers, because if it's true for Yorkies, it would be true for beavers, right? So, um, Stravina, Str Strenivas, Andra, um, yes, Yorkie, uh, beavers too, I would suggest hand stripping. Um, Holly G, hey, Holly G. Hi, Jane, thank you for always making such good videos. This is my first time, oh! First time catching me live. That's awesome, Holly G. Thank you so much. And and I, you know, I, I'm I'm very appreciative that you're so kind <laughs> because my videos, I know they're not great. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for enjoying the videos and you know ma making that great comment. Uh, you know, really encourages me. Um, Christina Lee, that's a great idea. Thanks. Okay. Oh, you know, Christina Lee. Let me go back and what was that? Oh, yeah, Christina Leah, that's right, the brushing service after the walk. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, yeah, don't feed drugs, kids. No, I'm just kidding. Um, DW, uh, huge smile for DW. CYR 1983, my doggy freaks when he gets his face washed, trimmed. How can I help him overcome it? He's a Shizu. Okay. Sometimes shizus, and you know, because they have like that um, brachiophallic, they call it, you know, like the smush nose uh, face. Um, because they have that kind of face, sometimes they can get scared of, you know, the water being around. They, you know, you know they panic. Um, you just, I would suggest maybe um, use like a sponge, you know, like a, you know, like a bath sponge for us, and with the lukewarm water, and just gently act like you're petting him with it. Maybe do it like that way. If you don't have a sponge, I've even used a warm wet cloth before. And so, you know, just get like a washcloth, like, you know, a clean, clean washcloth uh, or a clean towel even. Get it wet with the water and then use it that way, you know, and just kind of gently let the towel, the, the water from the towel kind of gently clean their face um, and rinse the soap off if you have soap on their face. And that's the way I've done it before. Um, sometimes you really got to get in there and, you know, kind of get a good, get a good wash. So sometimes I'll even like, just kind of use my head, my, I mean, my, not my head, my hand and cover their head like a visor almost and spray the water this way. And so it, my ha hand here covers their eyes and their face, you know, but then they, you know, they shake out and I, I, I don't grab them. I just put it right there against their head like that. And I spray the water. 
And usually they'll keep their head right there because they, they notice immediately that I'm blocking the water from going into their nose and their eyes. Uh, sometimes though, they'll shake off like that. And I let them because in my opinion, it's better to give them the obvious way out. So they know that I'm not being restrained. I can just move this way and get out of this. He's not really restraining me and holding me. Um, so they freak out less. And it's just been my experience. I'm not saying that this will work with everybody, but it's just my, it's been my experience that when I just put my hand there and spray the water, they usually keep their head right there. And they, and they actually learn to trust me more because they see, they see that I'm protecting their, their sensitive areas. Um, and I'm not restraining them in a, in a way where they can't get out of it. So, um, so a couple of times they will do that. They'll do that like that. And they'll, they'll realize that every time I put my hand there and they, they move back, water is getting in their face. So, you know, they, they kind of learn to just keep their hand right there, their head on my hand. Um, and, but, you know, that doesn't work with every dog either. So you just got to get creative with it. But usually um, a bath sponge or um, a wet, a wet, wet um, washcloth uh, or a towel even, like a hand towel, um, those all are, you know, good ways to get them used to the water being around their face and a good way to clean their face without having them freak out too much, you know. Um, but great question, CYR 1983. 1983, wow. I was born in 1981, so that means we're two years apart. Oh, man, you're, <laughs> you're getting up there too, buddy. Uh, the Jaredell Show. The Jaredell Show. What is the Jaredell Show? Um, how do you stop the dog from moving? Okay, I know this is going to sound crazy, and I always like to preface things that sound crazy with saying, I know that this sounds crazy <laughs> because I don't want to end up in a loony bin. I don't want people concerned and call somebody on me, you know, take me out to a safe place. <laughs> so believe me, I'm grounded in reality. I know this sounds crazy, but I use the power of my mind. <laughs> and I know how crazy that sounds, but I, I use the power of my mind. Um, I, a dog, so that dog's like, you know, going crazy. I just go silent. I don't, I don't, oh, baby, it's okay, baby, oh, blah, 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 you know, like, I don't baby talk, I don't go, I don't, I don't get, you know, I don't, I just go silent, and um, the Jared Dell show, I, I vision, I, I imagine the scenario that I want, the dog behaving, you know, and being calm while I clip the nails, or whatever I'm doing, or, you know, if I'm, if I'm, like, trying to scissor around the eyes, and the dog's freaking out, you know, I just breathe, and stop for a moment and just picture what I want to happen and then I just do it. And I don't know if it's a dog sensing, like reading my body language or reading like the chemical changes that happen, whatever it is that happens scientifically I or even like the pseudoscience, you know, like the metaphysical, um, you know, quantum physics, all that stuff. You know, I don't want to get all loony, but you know, it just, it seems to work. And, and they say that the same thing works with soccer players, you know, before they're about to kick the penalty shot, like if they get a penalty shot and the goal is just them and the goalie, even hockey players, they're saying before you even take a step towards the puck or the ball, already see what you're going to do and see it happening before you even make a move. And it's called visualization techniques. And and, you know, it's, it seems to work for me in my experience. And maybe it's because I believe it. And I see the same thing about, like, Tony Robbins, um, Jim Rohn, Robin Sharma, all these motivational guys. I know they're all saying the same thing, you know, and it's such obvious stuff that they say, you know, like, it's good to, it's good to, better to drink water than it is to drink beer. You know, it's like obvious stuff. I know. Thank you very much for the great advice. But, um you know, and I, I tell my, my, my wife and my friends, um, I know that I'm not the first person to ever hear these guys say these things, but maybe I'm just foolish enough to believe them. And that's why it works for me. You know, um, maybe not about the beer. <laughs> this is pumpkin. This is pumpkin ale, um, seasonal. Oh my goodness. Anyways, it's like a pumpkin pie with kind of the spice and everything in it with no sugar. It was, anyways. Um, Let's see, where did I leave off? Uh, okay, the, the Jared Delk Show, per, thank you for that question. You know, I, I'm glad I got it. I call it Jedi grooming. I kind of address this in my book, The Art of Grooming. Um, oh. My goodness. 
great great opportunity to plug my <laughs> the art of grooming. I actually talk about it in the art of grooming. I call it um, Jedi grooming. Uh, but anyways, uh, Holly G just lurking today, but I have an interview for training dog groomer soon. Oh, soon. All oh, thank you. Thanks to you. Whoa, thanks to me. No, it's thanks to you, Holly. Um, so excited slash nervous. You know, uh, love the historical content. Oh yeah, right. I love that. Like where grooming came from because I think it helps take like real passion and pride in what we do. Um, for example, Treacle, this dog I groomed the other day, um, she had like all these really nasty brown, you know, like yucky spots all over. And she still has one like right here on her arm and chest. Um, I'll show it to you. But um, I actually um, talked to her mom today and just wanted to make sure she's good. And she's saying she's she looks great. Thank you so much for taking good care of her. But I hand strip the head, hand strip the ears. And inside the ears, I used to actually do um, a 10 blade. And a 10 blade is pretty close. And shave the inside of the ears, just like around the around the opening, kind of, you know, to get that Cocker Spaniel look. Um, and, but I actually the other day, yesterday, or was it the other day? Anyways, when I groomed her, I hand plucked the whole thing, and it looks so super clean and nice. I mean, shaving shaving cannot even compare with it. Um, then, uh, the if you see her tummy area, all of that, the sanitary area and her butthole, it was all brown and yucky and goopy. I I hand plucked all of that, and look how clean it looks. It's it, you know you can never get that clean smooth look by shaving you know you'll still have some stubble and all that stuff and and brown it was really yucky down there but now look how clean it looks on her right arm right there where it meets the chest you see that brown spot um she's saying that um the vet actually looked at it and he was saying it's like a surface injury that she was looking at um but now i hand stripped most of that and now it's still just a you know it's a little brown but you know, all, a lot of that dead undercoat and a lot of that thickness um, is out, out of the skin now. So now the skin has a much better environment to heal itself, along with that uh, paw that she was chewing at. You know, so she, even, even after I was done, when I was cleaning up, she just laid and she was just so calm and peaceful. And the manager there named Brittany, um, Brittany even commented, she was like, oh my gosh, she's sleeping, you know, like she's so comfortable. And I was like, of course she's comfortable. I, I sweated my ass on oh, no, those years, but you know, like, anyways, um, yeah, that's, that's why we do what we do, you know, and, um, knowing that when I bring the dogs home and the whole house just erupts, oh my God, you know, and the dog's jumping up and everybody's loving the dog and it's such a happy moment. I created that, you know, and knowing that I created that moment with my own sweat, my effort, um, it's just, it fills me with a sense of purpose and pride in what I do. You know, it makes me feel like I'm, I'm a master at my craft, you know, not because I've grown better than anyone or compete, you know, won a competition, but because of that moment that I was able to create for the family, you know, and that moment lasts until my next appointment, you know, and then they look a little bit rough by the time I need to groom them again. And then, you know, again, that moment, bam, you know, like, and that's what we do as dog groomers. Um, we're not just we're not just washing a dirty dog and clipping their hair off. We're we're these, we're powerful creators. Um, <clears throat> the reason why I wanted to be a pastor all my life um, was because when I was younger, every time there was like a you know problems at home, it, it would get pretty rough. It would be a pretty rough at home sometimes. Um, but my 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 mom's pastor would come and pray and you know talk to them and listen and you know counsel them and everything would be nice everything would be nice and calm after he left and happy you know um and i wanted that i wanted to do that for others i wanted to be that guy you know that comes into someone's house and makes the situation better and everybody's happy because i, I was there and i get to do that now you know i'm not a pastor but you know i get to do that with dog grooming and so you know <clears throat> when you think of it that way holly g like and and I get the I get the nervous, um, excited feeling because I get that every single appointment that I go to. <laughs> it's crazy because um, you would think by now, my clients have followed me from my shop that I lost. You know, I had to close my shop 
to doing a really quick stand of house call grooming. And then we had a house where we groomed in the, it was a, so it was a home based business. Then we left, <laughs> went out West and then came back and they're still with me. So there's nothing to worry about, right? I mean, they're with me, but still every single, every single dog that I'm about to groom when I'm driving to that appointment, I feel this excited, nervous energy. And I think that's, I think that's a good thing, Holly. I think that means that we, we're really passionate. We really care about our craft. So I think you're going to be amazing, Holly. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining the show. Um, Christina F. Woohoo! Finally caught the live session and figured out how to type it. Oh, <laughs> congrats. And she's uh, Christina F. is saying congrats to you, Holly G. Yes. And, you know, that's so awesome. Um, and that's pretty cool, Christina F. You finally caught the live session and that's awesome. Um, Let's see here. Holly G. E. Thank you, Christina. Oh, my goodness. There's a lot of love going on here. Uh, Tammy Jowden. Hey, I made it to one of your live videos. Oh, yes. Uh, can't wait to hear your lessons, what, what your lessons are too. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I was actually questioning maybe weekly is too much, you know, because what if people are like, oh, my goodness, another Thursday. What are we going to learn from June today? You know, like I didn't want it to be too much, but, you know, hey, if everyone likes it, let's keep doing this every Thursday. This is awesome. Tammy, welcome. Uh, CYR 1983. I will get him a sponge. Thank you so much. Yeah, try the bath sponge. I think it and also like calming spa music, like nice classical music. You know, it doesn't hurt. Oh, I read a study where um, they they try to test different music genres and different types of music and see which which music styles respond to the best. It was folk music, and I, I looked at what folk music is. It's pretty chill. I like it. Like I was picturing like bluegrass almost, like twangy. I thought that's what folk music was. Folk music is actually pretty laid back. I like it. Um, but yeah, it's pretty funny that they actually, you know, dogs actually respond to music. Um, Joanna, Joanna Anise. Wow, it's like an old friend. Hi, Joanna. Um, the Jordell Show. Thank you so much for answering my question. Oh, my Shizu is four months old and he got groomed for the first time two weeks ago. And I really want to try to groom him myself. And you should groom him yourself because what is grooming? Groom is not, grooming is not the haircut. Grooming is checking their teeth, cleaning their ears, you know, checking their nails and clipping if necessary, uh, brushing their coat, which should be done on a regular basis. This is all grooming. So yes, you know, of course you should groom at home, Jaredell. Uh, the Jaredell Show. And by the way, what is the Jaredell Show? Is it like a like another show? Maybe maybe I could be a guest on your show or something. <laughs> um, Nidia Ballesteros, Ballesteros, I think. Sorry, June, missed last few working a lot, which which is good. Um, so work still no groomer, but a client came in with the heavy matted shizu. Oh my goodness. So oh my I think I need to sneeze. No. Um but yeah. Um Nidia, uh I've been busy and I've been slow. Um and now I'm really, really busy. And I can tell you, it's much better to be busy than slow. <laughs> and when you're, when I'm slow, I'm well rested. I have all these ideas and inspiration. When I'm busy, I'm, I'm just tired and worn down. But I love being busy. That feeling of just every day when I go to sleep, I know I'm spent. You know, I know I gave everything I could for the day. You know, and that's I think that's a really rewarding feeling. Um, Christina F must get sponge for my shizu too. Oh. My freaks out. I thought it was because he's a rescue who was abused. Same here too with uh, doing my myself. Less stressful for him and bonding. That's exactly right, Christina F. Um, more important than the money saved from going to the groomer and all of that is that bonding time. And when it comes down to the haircut, if you've been grooming them regularly, brushing them, cleaning their ears, doing all that, when it comes time for the haircut, I mean, literally, yeah, just take them to the groomer and, you know, and that happens like once every three months. And the groomer is not going to be upset, especially if the coat is in good condition. They're not matted. You know, the groomer is not going to be upset that you come once every three months. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of my, my clients are like on a three months, you know, rotation because, hey, if they can maintain the coat, you know, I, I don't mind just coming in and doing the haircut. Um, let's see. <clears throat> The Jared Dell Show, 1983. Here too, I'm a licensed cosmetologist. Wow, and thinking of grooming my dog scares me. 
LOL, where can I get the best grooming tools? Any tool recommendations? Um, I do have a video where I go through the tools that I have in my toolbox. I still use those same tools. Um, and they actually look pretty new because I clean them regularly. If, as long as you don't let the gunk sit on your tools and cause it to get rusty and nasty, your tools will last. You know, take care of your tools, clean them, and your tools will take care of you. So I don't really have like a, a particular brand or anything that I recommend. A lot of my, a lot of the tools I bought generic, no name brand. I went to PetSmart and bought a pair of thinning shears that I love. Um, so you know, I'm not, I'm not big into brands. <coughs> Okay, Holly G. Um, I don't want to get all soppy, but thanks, Junior. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you're welcome, Holly. You're awesome. Thank you so much. You know, telling me that I'm the best, really, you're, you're actually um, projecting. You're the best. You're, you're seeing great qualities in yourself and me, you know, because I'm telling you, I'm, I, I have a lot of flaws, Holly. <laughs> um, you, you, everybody sees them every week, right when we start, you know, how I fumble through everything, but um, Holly, you're, you're awesome. You're, you're seeing everything that's great about you in me, which I really appreciate. Uh, <laughs> Theodora Paz, what's the easy way to cut his paws, paw hairs to keep clean? I want to try. Um, see, it, the hand stripping, back to hand stripping, I actually go in between the paws and, you know, just kind of get out as much as I can. That's going to come out easily. And then once you do that, the rest of the hair that's long and sticks out of the pad, paw, paw pads, you could just scissor or take a 10 blade with the clippers and you know just skim over and clip them that way. But again, my personal preference, I like to pull out the dead brown yucky hairs um, before I start trimming. Um, Nydia Ballesteros. Oh my goodness, where did that go? Where did that comment go? That's kidding. <laughs> Wow, Dean, I've missed the last few sessions working a lot, but congratulations. There are new people joining you. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, my goodness, Nydia. Uh, I can't believe this. This is amazing. Uh, can't wait to meet you when you're in Arizona. Yeah, you know, I've been thinking about going back to Arizona, you know, I mean, just to visit because I loved it out there, and I have a lot of friends out there now. So um, Mario, I don't know if he's watching. They don't care about me. <laughs> no, I was kidding, but... Um, Mario, Mel, you know, all these people, sh uh, Shy, um, anyways. Um, Harley, Holly G, job or not, I'll definitely keep coming back to your videos and streams. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Holly. You're, you're so amazing. Um, let's see. Uh, Theodora Paz, video cutting in and out. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, it, it might... My, my computer's been acting up these days. In my, I may have to like start deleting some pictures and videos that I've been storing on here. Um, Holly G, loved hearing how you found your own way to bring people in dogs. Oh my goodness, yeah, right, Holly? Um, and that's the thing, I think uh, even all the wrong turns that I've made in my life and all the experiences that I've had where I thought like, wow, I'm done. You know, I'm done. Oh my goodness. When I got arrested for the first time for DUI, <laughs> I probably shouldn't talk about this. But there was one point where I, I woke up in jail in a holding cell and I just knew my life was over. I knew everything was just over for me. You know, um, and I, I remember crying just like, oh my goodness, I might as well just kill myself because my, my life's useless. I've been to jail now, you know. And it was something stupid. I was 19 years old. Um, I got called out at three o'clock in the morning to go pick up a drunk friend. Uh, we worked together and I actually had to work the next day. And I was like, is there no one else? Is there nobody else that can pick you up? And he was like, dude, that's why I'm calling you because there's nobody else. And so, you know, I, I go to pick him up. So I show up at the bar. He's plastered. He's wasted. And he's got these shots, like four shots lined up on the table still. And I'm like, hey, his name was Wit. <laughs> I'm like, hey, Wit, come on, man. Let's get out of here. I got to get you home. I got to get back home and sleep. And he's like, you got to take a shot with me, man. You got to take a shot with me. And I was like, I got this wristband. I'm underage. You know, I can't. He's like, nobody cares. Nobody cares about that. <laughs> like, just take a shot. So, you know, boom. Took a couple shots. I took two. He took two, I think. Anyways, um, yeah, I'm racing home, flying by this empty highway to try to rush him home so I can get back home and sleep. And I see lights. Anyways, so that's what happened. Uh, but yeah, I mean, everything. And I, and I realized that had I not got pulled over that night, had I not gone to jail, 
I would actually be in the Navy right now because I, I went to the Navy recruiter a couple, like a, about a month or so before, took the ASVAB test, which is like the test they, they give you, you know, to see um, kind of like your competence level, I guess, and like a competency test. <clears throat> like the military's version of the ACTs or SATs, I guess. Um, but I completed that, you know, and they were going to ship me off. And they even told the judge that, hey, you know, I, I was supposed to be uh, shipped off to boot camp. Um, that's being held back because of this whole thing. You know, can I get off and go serve my country? And the judge was like, no, give me the full sentence. So, but anyways, and I, I just, I knew my life was over because I had this plan. I was going to go to the Navy, you know, take advantage of their academic program and everything. And knowing my personality, I, pro I could probably be an officer right now in some other country in the world. Um, I would have never met my wife. I would have never had my kids. I would have never became a dog groomer. So, you know, sorry for boring you guys with this, you know, big, long story. But, you know, Holly G, um, if, if my life could be of any inspiration to anyone, um, yeah, even the, even, the, even the experiences where you think that you've hit rock bottom and there's nowhere further down you could go and, you know, you got to call your mom and collect from jail <laughs> when you were, like, supposed to be a pastor. Um, but, yeah, you know, everything happens for a reason. And now I'm here grooming dogs and making people's lives better. And, you know, by making their dogs' lives better, this is amazing. Um, Show Bob, Jim, have you gotten into Asian style haircuts? Asian style haircuts. I wrote the book on Asian style. No, it's good. <laughs> um, Show Bob, I love the Asian style haircuts. The Asian fusion is what is what you know they're calling it. It's big, big trend now, big uh, craze in the grooming industry. Um, really, all it is is just clipping the body close and just flaring out. You know, extreme, extreme long legs you know, nice round muzzles, you know, everything's kind of extreme with the Japanese. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I don't, I think that if you know how to groom a Cocker Spaniel, you know how to do Asian style. <laughs> um, Theodora Paz, didn't get your opinion on the paw soaking. Um, paw soaking. Uh, I don't know. I've never, I don't know about paw soaking. I usually, with the, with the paw pads, um, after they're groomed, I have something called Skin Works. Um, also, there's a really nice um, Equis, E-Q-Y-S-S. -S. Equis makes amazing, um, I think it's called Microtech. It's like a, like a skin rebuilder. Not, it's like uh, this white cream. But um, the Skin Works, it's called The Skin Works. Um, that also has like, like this little white cream um ointment i guess but i put that on the paws and that seems to make the paws nice and soft and clean if that's what you're talking about theodora but i've n i've never done like a separate paw soaking or anything like that um well you know anything with the paw even if my my dog we me my shizu mix after we get done with the walk and it's all muddy and and wet i would i just kind of brush it out and after it's brushed and dried you know, the, the mud and the dust and everything just kind of falls off. It's clean and white again. Um, so Tammy Jalden, so what I hear you saying is that you pluck each hair out by hand. Yes. Yes, I do. Um, not, not all by hand, of course, using the hand stripping tools and the knives, you know, to help grip. But yeah, I go through the whole entire dog. And that's the thing. The hair comes out so easily, but it's easy to pluck, pick one apple off a tree and eat it. You know, but if you're going to harvest an entire orchard, depending on how big that orchard is, but even just one tree, trying to pick all the apples off of one tree, I mean, you know, now you're now it's hard. Now it's, now it's going to take some time and effort. And that's the same thing with uh, hand stripping. Even though it's so easy to just pluck those hairs out, to go through the entire dog, you know, Tammy, you know, yes, it, ta it, it takes some time. Um, Theodora Paz, June the party animal. Oh, <laughs> I guess, I guess, I don't know. Um, and it's really weird, my, you know, like what I've been through, because I've, I've been all the way on the other side where I was studying to be a pastor, even went to Bible school. And then after that, I kind of went all the way on the other side, you know, raving and doing all this crazy stuff. So, you know, I have a, I feel like I have a very unique perspective on life because I've kind of seen both ends and I found love on both sides. So, um, Ashley Palin, my Bichon Poodle gets staining underneath the eyes, and I've tried lots of tear stain removal, but nothing has worked. <clears throat> I'm glad you brought that up, because I actually groomed um, Pomeranians. 
for uh, my mom's one of my mom's friends. She actually has done a lot of research and started feeding her Pomeranians because the eyes, the tear stains. She said it got so bad that the like that, that area would get raw. And so she kept looking into different things, and now she feeds her dogs raw diet. And she gets, she says it's kind of expensive, but you got to get like the different special cuts of meat and like make sure you put the organs in there and things like that. <clears throat> um, and, you know, keep some fat in there. It's, you know, there's a science to it, but she's, she's starting her dogs. Um, when she started feeding her dogs a raw diet three or four months ago. And when I was grooming her dogs, no tear stains. And you know, she said it took about maybe two, three weeks. So maybe try raw diet. I can't, I personally can't try it because you know, I'm working on a budget, and for me to get three dogs on a raw diet at this point in my life, just not realistic. But you know, hey, let's say I bring, you, I start rolling. You know, I start rolling in the dough, and I have you know the funds to do it. Of course, I'll put my dogs on raw diet. But yeah, maybe if you, if you're able to, Ashley, maybe try the raw diet for your Bichon Poodle mix. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Let me get. Okay, Christina F. Anyone else think this would be a great way to have a June the Groomer school? Whoa! Um, there are zero schools out here that I know of in Utah. Wow, yeah, I was out there in Utah. Actually, there is a there's a lady out in Utah. She she has like a re, like a legit school. She said she registered and everything, so it's a, like a real legit school. Um, so they can legally take tuition and all that stuff, but. You know, you might look into it. I forget her name, but there is a lady out there in Utah. Um, I, I, found, I saw her. She made a comment on, well, anyways. Um, <clears throat> you know, to be honest, Christina, I will, that's what kind of what I'm working towards. I, like, maybe in about five to ten years, because I think that's about ten years from now, most of my client dogs, you know, even the ones that are puppies now, will probably be older, you know, and kind of, you know, I may have like a whole new set of clients by then. And so then, you know, maybe I'll, I'll be looking into like the next stage of my career and that I would love to teach. I would love to, um, you know, be the kind of teacher that creates masters, you know, it's like a true master creates more masters. That's really my goal. Um, Holly G, haha, are the anecdotes always this good? Infectious giggling, touching story. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> I, I guess it's per perspective because Holly, um, you know, some videos, you know, some people are like, oh my God, you're so amazing. And the same video, another person will be like, oh my goodness, you're the, you're the scum of the earth, you know? So, you know, I mean, I'm so happy that you like it, Holly. <laughs> that means so much to me, but, um, you know, not everybody probably thinks that my, you know, my anecdotes are great, that great. Um, DW, how's Muffin? Muffin. See, uh, Muffin was actually not my client dog. Um, that was when I was working for a place called Animal House. So it was their clients. And, you know, after I stopped working for, for Animal House, I actually never saw Muffin again. So, whew, thank God. <laughs> no, I was kidding. Whew. Uh, but yeah, Muffin. Muffin, and for those who don't know, Muffin is a dog that just scared me to death. When I first started grooming, she bit me so hard that my thumbnail broke. And every time after that, she knew she had my number. She knew I was terrified, and she would just totally, totally take advantage of me. Um, Holly G, try, try to and less, try to and be less soppy. Have you ever talked about your thoughts on dying coats? Oh, um, <laughs> she's trying to be less soppy. Uh, Holly G, uh, there is actually a really great groomer named Melissa. Conti Diener, Diener or something like that. But um, Melissa is the regional manager for the grooming department for Pet Club Grooming. Or, you know, it's called the Pet Club. They have several locations. But the Pet Club has a grooming department led by Melissa. And she's actually on um, Arizona Groomers. And um, there's continuing education for Arizona Groomers. These are Facebook group pages that she does. Um, but yeah, you can get in touch with Melissa um, at Pet Club in Arizona and she's she's uh, like you know teaching classes and doing all this stuff and she's really into that um, hair coloring and dyeing and things like that me not so much you know my personal preference is keeping the dog looking as natural as possible bringing out natural beauty that's kind of my thing so um, not that I disagree with it I respect that you know but you know that's just a different art form 
Um, so I, I like to stick to my craft. Uh, so yeah, I don't. I personally don't have any, um, uh, you know, recommendations or advice about dyeing coats. Um, Holly G. <clears throat> also, I doubt I'd make it to America for in-person June training. Oh my goodness, where are you, Holly? Are uh, you not in America? That's that's pretty cool. Um, I'd like to know where you are and what time it is. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, Christina F. For yeast infections on paw, peroxide and apple cider vinegar, one cup each in gallon water. Help my pit bulls paws soaked. Thirty seconds. Pat dry. Yeah, that sounds pretty good because the peroxide would wipe out any kind of infection. And so would the apple cider vinegar. Um, I would I would like to follow up with maybe like a light layer of argan oil maybe just so we can add moisture and oils back onto the skin. Um, but yeah, that's pretty that's pretty good, cool idea, Christina. Holly G, but June, but June would be great for Patreon, don't you think? The content being made anyway, and it could definitely. What's Patreon? Holly G is saying, but June would be great for Patreon, don't you think? The content is being made anyway, and it could definitely. I don't, huh. Christina F. Ooh, I will search for her. Five to ten years, lol. The grooming world can't wait. Oh, and uh, okay, she actually Melissa has a has a um, blog that she just started recently, and she's she's awesome. Um, it's uh, getgroomified.com. I think I think it's getgroomified.com. Let me double check here. But um, Melissa, you know, she's one of my favorite people. Um, not just a great boss to work for, a uh, great groomer to work alongside with, but just an inspiration. And she's always trying to uplift others and trying to um, further like the education in the grooming industry. Get groomified. Is that not it? Is it uh, still? Oh, okay. Yeah, it is. So uh, that's the link getgroomified.com. And she's also into the essential oils, so she could teach you about essential oils. She could teach you about the coloring, all of that stuff. So um, that's getgroomified.com. Um, Holly G, put that money to good use. Sorry, on phone, poor typing, huh? <laughs> that, you, wow, you can actually type. I didn't know that. Wow, that's pretty cool, Holly G. I didn't know that you could actually watch this from your phone and chat. I thought you had to be on the computer. Interesting. I might, I might try to, anyways. Um, okay, Christina F. Oh, no, I was thinking of in Utah. Oh, okay. Um, CYR 1983 question. Is it good to have shizus with small eyelashes? My dog scratches his eyes a lot when they are so long, when they are long. So when I cut, so when I take him to get groomed, I ask them to cut them short. <clears throat> now, I've heard that some dogs, you know, it does irritate them. It causes, you know, their eyes to get irritated and things like that. I've never had any of my clients that keep long eyelashes complain. Um, I keep my dog's eyelashes long because my wife and kids like it. I've never had any problems with it. But, you know, every dog is different. So your dog just may not like all of that, you know, in front of him. So maybe that's why he's going at it. So if, if, he, if your dog prefers short eyelashes, you know, hey. <laughs> um, but great question, CYR 1983. Holly G, June, check out Patreon later. Patreon. Lots of YouTubes and streamers use it. I'm in the UK. It's 20, so it's 8, 8.52 there. Wow, so it's actually at night there. Okay, so it's, it's 8.50. You guys are five hours ahead. That's, wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, well, Holly, thank you so much for joining me, you know, like well, uh, pretty much at 9 o'clock at night. <laughs> Also, in the UK, wow. But yeah, I'll check out Patreon. You know what though? I don't know, because <laughs> there's even been an um, like uh, Andy's. Yeah, I got this uh, email from Andy's. Um, they were telling they were telling me that they're looking for a new expert for the Andy's brand, um, like an expert search, and to to fill out the application. So I did filled out the application. And then I got an email saying, oh, you qualify for the second stage. You know, we need a 90 second video of you doing like either one of these three things, you know, and all this stuff. And I was just like, I'm not interested anymore. You know, like, oh man, I, I don't, I was, I didn't, I didn't mind like just kind of giving a shot, seeing what it's about. 
But as soon as it starts to feel like, oh, I have to start doing things or saying things or, you know, like, you know, I have to, you know, act in a certain way or, or say certain things that people want me to. And, you know, I, it's just, I start to lose interest. So, you know, like, even though, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll check it out. I have no problem checking it out. But yeah, I, I, don't, I just don't want to seem like too salesy. And I don't want to be like, oh, you know, hey, guys, if you want to learn more, you know, buy this or check this out, you know, like, I, I don't like dating people. So and, and I don't like to be baited. That's the exactly why. Like, I watch a lot of videos, how to's and things like that. And at the end, it's like just about when they're about to get helpful and you're about to get the information that you really want and why you invested all this time watching this video anyways, boom, click this link, you know, they bait you. And I don't like that. And so I try not to do it in my videos. So as long as it's not anything like that, Holly G, um, yeah, bye, honey. <coughs> yeah, I'll, I'll definitely check it out and see what it's about. Um, Theodora Paz, what do you use to clean dog's ears? Um, I have this um, aloe-based, um, like, pet ear wash thing that one of my clients gave me. She's all into like all this uh, certified organic stuff. Um, so I, I kind of, I've been using that. I'm out now. So I use Zymox ear cleaner. Um, I've used Nature Specialties ear cleaner. I've used um, EnviroGroom's um, natural green ear cleaner. I've used all kinds of ear cleaners, um, you know, and it's, it, I think it's just your preference. Just, you know, don't buy like the cheapest ear cleaner, but I think R7 makes a really good, it's called R, the letter R, number seven. They make a great ear cleaner. Um, so yeah, the ear cleaner, is, it's really, I think, up to you, but I've been having a lot of good uh, results with the Zymox. That's Z-Y-M-O-X, Zymox. Um, D-W, how does one get into grooming? I recently came to your channel after embarrassingly realizing what a natural poodle looks like. Where does one start? <clears throat> oh, man. Um, Oh, okay. So let me see here. <clears throat> there there was a page in the in that book, the Ultimate Dog Grooming book, where let me see if I could pull it back up here. I think I started. But anyways, in that book, um the Ultimate Dog Grooming book, I mean it was disc discussing several ways that you can learn mm -hmm. to become a groomer. But bottom line is, it's, it's about the practice. So whether it's your dog, your friend's dogs, rescue shelter dogs, if they'll let you, you know, volunteer and do that. Um, but yeah, just getting your hands on as many dogs as possible and getting that practice in. And that's just the only way to become a good groomer. Um, and there's a book called Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. Um, but the book Outliers basically talks about 10,000 hours, how to get achieve mastery level at anything whether it's music or sports or anything, um, you have to you have to put in ten thousand hours of deliberate focused practice. Um, but yeah, I didn't take a picture of. Uh, oh, but I did take a picture of this where they show an Airedale that was uh, hand stripped. I forgot to show this to everyone. So the the Airedale up on top on the top left of the screen or top right. Anyways, the the one on the top. Um, has not been hand stripped. You can see how fuzzy and dull and brittle and just, you know, wiry he looks. Um, and the second one where, you know, he looks just nice and shaved and trimmed, but he actually wasn't shaved. He wasn't trimmed at all with, with scissors or clippers. That was all just pulled off. And so that's pretty cool, isn't it? The ears, look how flat and clean those ears look. You can never get that clean, flat look with, with clippers unless you're using like a 30 or a 40 blade but then you're doing damage to the skin. So really, I think hand stripping is the, the best option when you're grooming um, interior coats like Airedales and things like that. Uh, but yeah, it's just really, it's, um, you know, my, in my opinion, uh, who is that? Who was that? that? <coughs> D, in my opinion, DW um, is because because it's hard to explain a feeling, because I actually have to go number one right now. I gotta go pee, um, but you know I'm gonna wait till afterwards. But anyways, to to hold your pee, right? Like I am now, and then to be able to go and go rush into the bathroom and you know relieve that that pressure building up, it feels so wonderful, right? 
But what if we had, and I'm sorry for getting so crude, <laughs> but it is just a real time example right now, what I'm going through. Um, what if an alien, you know, just dropped by and has no, none of these digestive system like we do and doesn't, doesn't ever have to pee. I can never explain to that alien in a way where he'll fully understand how good it feels to finally get to pee. You know, so it, the same thing with dog grooming. Um, I can explain to you in so many different words and try to say it, explain it so eloquently what it feels like when you pull that hair out or what it feels like the difference between live and brittle hair. Um, you just have to feel it and you have to feel different things and you just have to go through it. And it takes about 10,000 hours. And for an average person, um, if you're working at a grooming salon about five days a week, that's going to take about five years. If you're just, uh, you know, grooming at home and you're putting in practice time every single day for about two hours, um, it'll take about two, 10 years. So you can just think of it as like a 10 year rule, but yeah, to get, become a good groomer, it's just going to take that constant practice and getting your hands numb and calloused and broken, you know? <clears throat> um, let's see. Theodora Paz. P.S. I bought the Dirt Magic Bar soaps and have been brushing and combing more regularly. He's not itchy anymore. Awesome, Theodora. That's awesome. Also, have I've been using clear blue tear stain cleaner. What's your opinion? Um, I actually never heard of clear blue tear stain cleaner, so... Um, if you don't mind kind of documenting or just, just let me know in a few weeks um, how that clear brew is working, that'd be awesome, Theodora. You're awesome. Uh, Theodora, also, I totally commend your work, my back. <laughs> okay, so it's saying, Theodora Paz is saying, also, I totally commend your work. My back kills after bath and brushing and comb. Yes. <laughs> and that's why I only do like two appointments a day because – I mean, after that first appointment, a lot of times I'm like pep talking myself, like, come on, you can do it. You can do this next dog, you know, like it's just one more dog and then you get to go home and crash, you know, like, so yeah, it, but the thing is, um, if I'm, if I'm not going to put in that work, then I have no right to charge, right? I have no right to charge and to accept money unless I'm actually going to do the groom. Um, and just in my opinion. Uh, Holly G, I hear that. Patreon's the least salesy approach out there, I think. Totally up to you what you make of it. Awesome. Um, but yeah, Holly G, I'll look up Patreon. That that almost uh, reminds me of Patron. <laughs> uh, anyways, everybody's going to think I'm an alcoholic. Um, but that's the show today. Thank you guys so much um, for joining me. Uh, I, you know, if, Oh, there's one more question. Show Bob, how many dogs a day were you doing at a salon? At the salon, I was doing about six, sometimes eight on a good day. But, you know, that was also like rushing, kind of skipping steps, you know, not doing as much carding as I would like, you know, just looking for any way to cut corners, really, because that's the only way I could do six to eight dogs a day. And if I was doing six to eight dogs a day now, <clears throat> if, even if I was doing three to four dogs a day, just doubling the amount I do right now, I probably could be making so much more money. Um, but show Bob, for me, it's really not about the money. For me, it's about knowing that I have a purpose, you know, that that my purpose is to help these dogs with any kind of skin issues, not just skin issues, but look, help them look and feel their best. Um, and by doing that, bringing joy into these people's homes that's that lasts, you know, for weeks, months even, you know. So I, I know that I'm what I'm doing um, may not be the most – financially sound plan <laughs> and, and i'm not stupid in business wise i get it i watch shark tank profit you know not that making those shows makes me a business guru or anything but you know I'm, i i am i am interested in you know business strategies and business plans and business models and things like that but you know when you're working with live animals that you really care about it's really tough for me sometimes to try to draw that line where you know business meets heart you know um dw thanks thank you so much dw thank you for joining um theodora paz do you do live grooming streams thanks jane happy thursday see you next time i don't i've been thinking about how, ways how we can do that that would be pretty cool right to do like a live live um demo of and it says i can do a live stream for up to eight hours it takes up to eight hours sometimes to do like a full groom where you where i you know build the rapport get the dog comfortable get them on the table go through their entire coat, you know, 
uh, shampoo, condition, the rinse time, the drying, the final brush, and then the haircut if needs so, and then the polishing. Like all of these steps that I take sometimes takes like seven, eight hours on a dog that I've never done before. So yeah, that would be pretty interesting to, you know, kind of just go through the whole thing, you know. Um, Holly G, really glad I caught the show. Thanks, June. Have a nice evening. You too, Holly G. I'm so glad that you joined the show. You really made it an awesome show this week. And that's what, that's so cool. Like, you know, like this show really, I, I never know what to expect when I, when I actually hit the start broadcast button. You know, I don't know where the show's, I kind of have a plan in my mind. Like, I'm going to talk about this this week. But, you know, like, I, I'm really glad you joined, Holly, because, you know, this show kind of took a lot of a lot of directions that I'm glad it did. And it's and it, and it because that you were here. So I'm really happy for that. Uh, show Bob, I feel you. Good show. I feel you too, Show Bob. <laughs> but thank you so much. Thank you, guys. You know, I, I keep saying thank you over and over again. I wish there was a better word to really express how grateful. I am for everybody who joins, everybody who participates and supports, you know, what I'm trying to do, which is just create awareness about proper grooming. Um, but before I get too soppy and start crying over here, you know, um, thank you guys so much. I'll see you next week. <laughs>